Charter schools, what are they? And why is there so much controversy? The advantages and disadvantages for students right here. Plus, we travel to Miami, Florida to investigate one of the nation's largest charter school systems. And your answer is? We'll take you inside the classrooms. It's a good school, it's a really good school, I like it. Could these schools be the answer for struggling school districts across the Susquehanna Valley? I think there are some really good charter schools out there, and we ought to have options. Chartered, a News 8 Learning Matters special. Thanks for joining us for this Learning Matters special. I'm News 8 education reporter Ann Shannon. We're taking a closer look at charter schools. The schools have been in the headlines here in the Susquehanna Valley and around the country, but most people don't know exactly what a charter school is. So let's start by defining what charter schools are all about. Charter schools have been around for about a decade. Born out of the alternative education movement, a charter school is a school that receives public funding but operates independently of the public school system in which it's located. Lawmakers in Minnesota passed the first charter school law in 1991. Today, 42 states and the District of Columbia have charter school laws. There are more than 5,000 public charter schools around the country, with more than 2 million students enrolled in them. Now, each state has its own charter school law. So how do charters work here in Pennsylvania? We went right to the state's acting secretary of education to find out. The next one is... Charter schools are public schools. That's an important and often misunderstood point, says Acting Secretary of Education Pedro Rivera. In Pennsylvania, the charter school law was passed in 1997. They were established by law to create lab schools within communities, so they should really work, um, provide opportunities that aren't provided by the, by the local school. Generally, charters have to be approved by local school districts. The schools are self-managed, but local districts pay the per-pupil expense for the students. That's been a cause of concern for some. It's taxpayer funded, it's locally funded, and more importantly, these are schools in which we send our kids and, you know, we'd expect them to serve them well. Very nice job. By law, charters do not have to meet all of the accountability standards that traditional public schools do. You have to have an annual assessment. But Rivera is quick to point out that all schools need to work for students. Like all traditional schools, if they're not performing, they have to be held accountable. And, um, you know, we can't just uh, be comfortable with allowing students to go to um, underperforming schools, and, and, and that is inclusive of charter schools. Rivera believes all students deserve a quality education. The law continues to, to evolve to ensure that charter schools are being held to the same standard as traditional schools. More than 100,000 Pennsylvania students are enrolled in those charter schools. They choose charters for a variety of reasons. Um, they have really good friends, and I like my teachers. We first visited the Vita Charter School in Gettysburg in 2013. We need it to be a sentence. It's designed to offer an alternative to traditional public schools. CJ's parents made the decision to send him here just weeks before he was supposed to start kindergarten at a public school. His mom, Alicia, a former elementary school teacher, saw her son struggling to grasp early reading concepts. Right. She decided the small class size, close-knit community, a unique approach to learning at Vita might help her son. I was so excited to send him to traditional public school, and it just, for my son, I had a feeling that it wasn't the right fit for him. I think the idea for our school is we're offering something that none of the other local schools are offering, particularly with the dual immersion. Uraka. Uraka. The students here spend half their day learning in Spanish, the other half learning in English. If everyone wants... The school draws from about eight different school districts. Good morning, everybody. At Sylvan Heights, we really focus on um, an emphasis on science and technology because we believe that minority children are, are majorly unrepresented in science community, and we really want to create an interest for kids at a young age to be engaged in science and technology because really that is the future. The school, which is located in Harrisburg's Allison Hill neighborhood, pushes students to ask questions, investigate, and solve problems, skills that should help them excel in their future. There are just about 220 students in the school. The small size helps students and teachers to connect and build strong relationships. Does anybody know what a histogram is? Established in 1998, La Academia was formed through a partnership of four community groups in Lancaster. The school is one of the first brick and mortar charters in the state. How about 450? Serving 200 students yeah, in grades 6 school, through 12, right? the school draws from its surrounding neighborhood. What's unique about the school is this is a small learning community and we do individualize uh, program for a student. Our class ratio is 15 students per teacher. So therefore, our students get 
a lot of attention in terms of instruction, curriculum applications, and how in the learning, okay? A lot of things happen in the classroom because the teacher can build that relationship with the students. This is the Our focus is to take those higher achieving kids and take them as far as they can go. At Infinity Charter School in Pembroke, Dauphin County, students are selected through a lottery system and there are always students on the waiting list. The school pre-tests all students and groups them according to ability, not grade level. They use a unique approach to subject material. There are no textbooks. Students don't receive report cards, they don't receive grades. Four times a year, parents meet with the teachers for half hour parent teacher and student conferences. And then we use checklists and the checklists are based on Pennsylvania core standards. Like it makes you want to push to be great like her. The York community is a diverse community. The Helen Jackson Charter School is a good choice for our community because it offers parents an alternative choice. A sister school to the Lincoln Edison Charter, this 6th through 12th grade school will graduate its first class this year. The school focuses on empowering students to make a difference in the community by giving them skills to be global citizens. We have smaller communities. We know our children by name. We're very involved with our parents. Some charter schools have had a tough road though. Hundreds of students in York had to find a new school after the New Hope Academy Charter School closed for good. You guys offer cross country, right? Yes, we do. The nearly 700 students had to look for a new place to continue their education. Students chose to move on to a variety of prospective schools from Catholic to private to virtual. Hopefully find a soft landing for every one of our students where they can be happy and continue to grow. New Hope's charter was not renewed because of poor academic performance, ethics and conflict of interest issues. The school lost its appeal. And at the Hilda Goodling School, financial problems were the big issue. We were there as teachers packed their bags. Students and parents were stunned. We really got shafted. That's what happened. As it stands now, uh, we financially, we don't have enough to go. Founder Isaiah Anderson, who was also involved in the New Hope Charter School, says the nonprofit school struggled to pay staff after donations fell through. School leaders tried to get additional friends from outsiders. They even set up a GoFundMe account online but it was not enough to keep the school running. Coming up next, it is one of the major complaints about charter schools, accountability. But could new legislation being introduced now make a difference for the future? Aid on your side, government reporter Pete Montine looks into it. We don't want it! Plus a major controversy in one Susquehanna Valley school district. Part of the argument centers on charter schools. I think before we accept that as the only option, we ought to really take a, a serious look at and some of the alternatives. Hear what the governor has to say about the role charter schools play in Pennsylvania. Question one. Right? Contrary to the opinion of some groups, PSEA is not anti-charter school. PSEA stands for the Pennsylvania State Education Association. The group represents many of the state's teachers and other education professionals. And according to spokesperson with Kiefer, a lot has changed since those first charter schools were first formed in 1997. Charter schools are now a billion and a half dollar uh, industry in Pennsylvania, and there are some significant gaps in terms of uh, financial and academic accountability for charter schools. So we think, feel that's something that needs to change. Accountability is a major issue in the fight over charter schools. Opponents say there's too little oversight and too many loopholes. It on your side, government reporter Pete Montine explains why some lawmakers want to change that. Money and ethics are the focus of a charter school reform measure that's gaining traction with House lawmakers. Known as House Bill 530, it's something of a revival of a charter school push that failed last year. Sponsors say it tackles three key areas. The bill calls for establishing a charter school funding advisory committee. It would explore the cost of teaching charter students and how the money is received. Charter schools would also be required to comply with Sunshine Laws and the Ethics Act. There would be teacher evaluations and regular audits. And student enrollment information would have to be standardized. It would also be made available to the local school district. After being introduced in February, the bill is now headed to the state Senate for further considerations. Pete Mundine, on your side, News 8. Thanks, Pete. House Bill 530 was introduced by Representative Mike Reese, a Republican from Westmoreland County. The Pennsylvania School Boards Association, which represents school board members across the state, supports this legislation. According to their website, PSBA is encouraged to begin the process of making charter school spending and academic performance more accountable to the taxpayers who fund them. 
Recently, the conversation in one Susquehanna Valley school district has centered on charter schools. The York City School District struggled with both academic and financial stability. In 2014, under Governor Tom Corbett, the State Department of Education hired David Meckley to help get the district back on track. Meckley's efforts were greeted with opposition by students, parents and community members, <laughs> as well as the school board. Along the way, the State Department of Education gave Meckley even more power, naming him receiver of the school district. At that point, Meckley selected a for-profit company, Charter Schools USA, to take over the district. But a lawsuit by community groups put that plan on hold in late 2014. In 2015, Meckley resigned after newly elected Governor Tom Wolf indicated his opposition to Meckley's plan to convert all city schools to charters. It's done. It's over. And this spring, a major step toward ending the battle over who controls the York City School District. The State Department of Education under Wolf asked Commonwealth Court to allow the state to drop its request for a state takeover. We have an agreement. We want this done. We want it over with. The request must first be approved by Commonwealth Court, then by a York County judge. Meanwhile, Governor Wolf has appointed a new recovery officer. Dr. Carol Saylor is already meeting with Mayor Kim Bracey and Superintendent Eric Holmes, as well as officials with the Department of Education. So with the changes in the York City School District, are charter schools still an option in Pennsylvania? We sat down one-on-one -on -one with Governor Tom Wolf to find out exactly where he stands. There are some really good charter schools out there, and we ought to have options. The governor tells me he supports the idea of charter schools and believes there are a number of good charters in the state and here in the Susquehanna Valley. When it comes to the situation in the York City School District, he says he doesn't want to see charter schools take over the entire district, at least not yet. I just didn't want to move all the way to charterization. I think before we accept that as the only option, we ought to really take a, a serious look at, at some of the alternatives. The governor tells me he thinks with the budget proposal he's put together, it's a game changer for struggling school districts. He wants to see what these schools, including York City, can do with their increased funding. But charter schools will remain an option for students who need an alternative. But could students be missing out because the governor's putting that option on the back burner? Coming up, News 8 investigates. We travel to Miami to check out Charter Schools USA. We have just enough time to get on the nooks. Go inside the classrooms, hear from the students. If it's not driving student achievement, if we're not actually doing something for kids that's better or different, then we shouldn't be doing it. Meet the man behind the charter school system that's transforming education for tens of thousands of students. See for yourself if students here could be doing better. So could students in the York City School District be missing out while they wait for state lawmakers and the governor to come up with a budget? Could bringing an established charter school model actually be a better option for students? We wanted to find out. So we went to Miami, Florida to check out the corporation that could have been charged with turning around the York City schools. My dad's a teacher, my mom's a teacher, public school teachers. My, both my siblings, my younger brothers were teachers, my wife's a teacher. So I grew up in a teacher family. Today, John Hage runs the country's largest charter school system. Point to it in the text. Charter Schools USA operates 70 different schools in seven states. There are 60,000 students in those schools. I really do believe education is that one thing in life, no matter where you're born, how much money you're born with, what the color of your skin, it doesn't matter. You can take an education, an opportunity, push yourself into it, and come back and do almost anything in life. Hage helped write Florida's charter school law and quickly became an advocate for alternative education. The idea is that while they are slowly processing and working, their brain is sort of spark plug learning. We've kind of put so many regulations on public schools that it's hard for them to be innovative anymore. It's hard for them to do something different. That's where charters can be different. The schools have more flexibility. What's this one? No! Charters don't have some of the same mandates that traditional public schools do, but charters are limited. In most cases, they're authorized to operate for a set period of time. I think the difference is, at the end of the day, is that if a charter's not working, um, it gets shut down. A traditional school goes on and on and on. Page believes families deserve a choice, one that's best for the individual student. A kid goes into a school, they don't really know what a charter is versus a traditional public versus a magnet. They just know, do they have a teacher that cares about them? <laughs> is the instruction rigorous? Are they learning something? Do they like school or is it something they dread every day to go into? Where we are in comparison to the district. The schools are focused on data in the classrooms 
Data charts are everywhere you look. So many data charts. Data is essential. The student by student data. The data is just a way to basically say, don't be subjective about what's happening. Be objective. Are we actually getting results for students? Are they learning the math equation? Nice job. Often criticized for turning students into statistics, Paige stands by the data-driven approach. I want data because I want to be accountable. More reading walls. I also want folks to know where they stand so that we can do a better job. We know our kids. We know exactly where they are. We know what Sally needs. We know you know, what James needs. Sherry Hage is the Chief Academic Officer for Charter Schools USA, a lifelong educator. She says students are more than just numbers here. Each student has a personal learning plan. That is key when students are owning their performance and they know exactly what they need to do to get to the next level. That's where you're going to see students just be super, super successful. Charter Schools USA has also come under fire for their for-profit model. It's something they don't shy away from. They point to the private sector, saying if their students and parents aren't happy, they can walk away and take those funds with them. We're trying to always focus on that balanced approach to make sure that we're efficient with resources, which is taxpayer dollars, and effective with the results for students, which ultimately is the whole point. We truly believe in the power of many. So when, when we're looking at resources to purchase, when we're looking at what's the best furniture, fixtures, some of that stuff, we really can take off of their plates. For the first story. Charter Schools USA prides itself on paying teachers a fair wage and promoting from within. As they move on from year to year to year. They just gotten used to being under the microscope, but says in the end. I go back out and I say, okay, shoot arrows at us right now because you might not know who we are, but as you start to see our heart and you see our soul and you understand we're in this for the right reasons, ultimately, I think people will get on board and, and be a part of our solution. At the end of the day, we want to raise our hand and say, hey, we think we can add some value. The proof of success for Charter Schools USA may be in the numbers. 100% of the schools they've managed for three years or more have scored an A, B, or C. You can check out the Charter Schools USA annual report online. We've set up a link on WGAL.com. So Charter Schools USA may sound good, but what is it really like? This school is more advanced than my other school. No favoritism, but with this school, it's, I learn better. Coming up, hear from the students and the teachers about what it's really like inside their school. It'd be interesting to see how that changes. Plus, we'll talk to the state secretary of education about his vision for the future of Pennsylvania schools and where charter schools fit into the plan. Welcome back to this Learning Matters special, Chartered. We've heard a lot about charter schools, especially those at Charter Schools USA. But what do the students have to say about their experience? Let's find out. We're at Downtown Miami Charter School. Excellent job, Table 6. We serve a population um, that is the parents really want a great education. Okay. As principal, Rebecca Dinda services a low-income student population. Very good. This year, 82% of them qualify for free or reduced lunch. Many of the scholars are coming to our school because they haven't been successful in their public schools and their parents want another option for them. My mom wanted me to come to here when I was in kindergarten, but so she put me on a list. Imani is nine years old now and in the fourth grade. He's just one of the more than 27,000 students nationwide on a wait list to enter a Charter Schools USA school. He says this school is worth it. I like how they inspire us to do our work because in my old school, they didn't inspire us. <laughs> this school is more advanced than my other school. No favoritism, but with this school, it's I learn better. DeAndre is in the gifted program. He and his classmates know exactly where they stand in class. It's a good idea because I like knowing my strengths and my weaknesses so I can make my weaknesses and strengths. Downtown Miami has been given an A by the Florida Board of Education. We are proud of the gains that we met, um, but we are not going to be satisfied here until, you know, 100% of our kids have that option to be on grade level, to be on track to get to reach their goals. We're going to take up what kinds of cases does the Supreme Court decide to hear? Actually coming here was like one of the best things 
ever because the school actually offers a lot of extracurricular things they actually help you 90 90 there you go they try and make you learn better the teachers don't just give up on you like any other schools they actually try to help you gary's an eighth grader at the north broward academy a kindergarten through eighth grade school run by charter schools usa it starts with an a it's a really good school i like it oh, we're listening i find that what makes us very special here at north broward is it's not just about what happens during the regular course of the day. It's that and more. North Broward, like its counterparts, offers tutoring both before and after school. There are Saturday sessions and summer camps. The teachers will go the extra mile for you. During the school day, you'll see extra teachers in classrooms to help out. Teachers also meet one-on-one -on -one with students to set goals and discuss the data. What makes North Broward outstanding is the relationship that we have with our many stakeholders particularly our parents. Student accomplishment is always the goal. Well, I recently just got invited to the, to the National Junior Honor Society, which I'm really happy about. <laughs> Coral Springs Charter is a 6 to 12 building. I feel really great about it. Students believe being at a charter gives them an advantage. Especially for my 9-11 project, it probably wouldn't have been possible at a different school. Students here wear uniforms, but say their individuality comes from their interests. They do a really good job. Students are involved in dance. Theater, sports, and the arts. So it would be a 660. Many teachers find themselves drawn to charters. It's not better or worse, it's just different. And that's not bad. And it's scary at first, but it's not bad. I taught for eight years prior to being here, and I learned more at Charter Schools USA within my first year than I had learned in my entire career. It's the students and the mission that keeps them coming back. What drives me to be here every day is that when you see the kids growing, you can't leave. <laughs> You can check out how your local charter schools are performing. The State Department of Education keeps track of their progress online. We've set up a link to the information on our website, WGIL.com. So what about the future of charter schools in Pennsylvania? While the governor has halted the charterization of the York City School District for at least a year, he's not against charters as a whole. I am not philosophically against charters. There are good charters out there and I think we ought to have a good, accountable, fairly funded charters uh, have, have enriched uh, school districts for a number of years and I'm sure they'll continue to do that. But charter school reform is on the front burner. House Bill 530 continues to gain momentum and support. It calls for changes in funding, ethics and enrollment standards, among other things. It's a bill we'll continue to follow. We believe that, you know, zip code should not dictate your quality of education, should not dictate the programs that you have available to you or, or your children. We, we believe that as, as Pennsylvanians, as residents of the Commonwealth, we should provide those opportunities for all children. Thanks for joining us for this Learning Matters special, Chartered. If you'd like to learn more about this or other education topics, you can go to our website, WGIL.com, and click on the Learning Matters banner. For all of us here at WGIL, I'm Ann Shannon.